They plan ahead. You may not know your future, but they do if they're in charge. And this is the way they operate. And they reversed Kennedy entirely on all of his domestic and foreign policies and went ahead with the permanent war economy and destabilization that they have been carrying out since then. And that's the country that we live in since November 22nd, 63. If you want to live in a democracy, you have to solve the Kennedy assassination. It's not a hard mystery, but you have to solve it and you have to face it. It's not that you cannot know, it's generally that you don't want to know. Because if you know what I just told you, which is the truth, and you want to live in a democracy and have a country of people that live under democracy, you have to do something about this. And that's why we come out here for the last 49 years to tell you the truth about who's killing people and why, and to suggest that we could live in another kind of society, we could have world peace, we could distribute wealth. There's no technology or science or anything else missing for how to make the world work and for all of us to survive together. But we've got people who make a vested interest because war is money in not having us get to that with each other and with the rest of the world. But the real enemies are not people abroad. They're not terrorists living in a cave. They're us. And to some extent, Jim Douglas last night spoke and he said, who financed the Kennedy assassination? And separate from these machinations, who really financed it is us. Our pocketbooks, our wallets financed the Kennedy assassination because it's our Pentagon, it's our CIA, it's our military. We own it whether we want to own it or not. And we have to decide whether we want the one we've got. If we don't want the one we've got, we've got to do something different in this country and change the structure of this country so that we can get to survivable world. We're not going to survive the world that they have planned for us. <laughs> We're damn lucky that John Kennedy stood up or we wouldn't be here today and survive the strategic interoperative plan. I found this year a document that they had a standing military order to be implemented immediately upon the assassination of any United States president. They would go without any orders or anything. They had this standing and all the commands were in place. They would, if they thought it was from a foreign source, and that meant communism, they would go immediately to the strategic interoperative plan. So November 22nd, 63, first they don't know who the, who the killer is, then they say it's a commie. They would have gone to the plan that they were going to do at the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis. I saw an exhibit at Dulles Airport about what you can see from a satellite. It was a phony exhibit. It showed these grainy looking photographs of buildings. If you can put a satellite into space, that's only 17 miles up, and you can turn it out to the universe, and you can see all the way back to the beginnings of the cosmos. If you turn it around and shoot it back 17 miles to here, what do you think you can see? You think they can see this bullhorn? They damn sure can. You think they can see the look on my face? Yes. Read your license plate or anything else. So they tried to say that satellites only see these grainy things, and then before satellites that there were spy planes, and they had a model of the U-2 spy plane, which caused quite a bit of trouble. One one was shot down, so they said, others said sabotage. In any case, uh, they, they had a picture taken from a U-2 in Cuba of a Quonset hut and some buildings and some trucks with hooks on them that led to the analysis that the ICBMs and the nuclear weapons had been moved from Russia to Cuba. And this was an old glossy photograph that had been part of the analysis that led to the, to the Cuban Missile Crisis. And typed on the bottom in old typewriter font, it said, courtesy of Jagger Charles Stovall. And I bust out laughing, but 99.9% .9 of the American public don't know what that means. Jagger Charles Stovall was over here in Fort Worth. It's subcontracted to the National Reconnaissance Organization, the NRO, whose initials were secret in those days. And it itself subcontracted out to a firm called the Saul Bloom Advertising Agency, which interestingly enough, did the, did the advance work for the Kennedy motorcade. And employees of that changed the motorcade route. Okay, but Saul Bloom had better photographic equipment than Jagger Childs. And they sent their top photographic enlargement and, uh, and, 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 and their intelligence agencies what was going on about the Kennedy assassination and penetrating the groups that were around it. And they set him up as the patsy in the case. He did not kill Kennedy, he didn't kill anybody that day, he didn't fire a weapon. He wasn't on the sixth floor, he was on the second floor, drinking a Coke, okay? But he's been made into the villain so that the real villains cannot be seen. 
okay? But this country hides things. I live in Washington, D.C. A few miles from me is the Suitland National Records Center in Suitland, Maryland, National Archives. Military records since World War II in underground buildings. Each building is an acre in size. 27 acres of hidden documents just since the end of World War II that you're not allowed to see. That's your history, literally captured and buried. Today, you had to get a ticket to see your history and to come out here, unless you're willing to wait out in the cold rain till now, all right? But part of the reality of the national security state is that they steal our history. And a, and a people whose history is stolen is a conquered people, because without knowing our own history, we cannot act. Martin Schatz said that the political paralysis in America is based on the fact that we are allowed to believe anything, but, a, a not, but allowed to know nothing. And if you cannot know, you cannot act. But I would suggest you can know. And we went to the record and we found it, and we unearthed more of it. It's not a parlor mystery. It's not something you can't figure out in your lifetime. I just gave you the analysis. Is it a conspiracy theory? Everything starts as a theory, but what's in it, when it's embellished by facts, it becomes a conclusion. And so you have to go to the facts. You can't just make up a theory. But, you know, it's not about theories. It's about reality, and it's about history, and it's about getting back what's left of democracy in this country if you want it. And uh, there's, there were five of us back in the day coming out here every year. After Oliver Stone's film, it went into the hundreds. There were 5,500 on the 40th. I don't, his 5,000 today. How many more were locked out? You know, it's not going to die. It's not going to go away. This was a moment of silencing. This was a perpetuity of silence. This was to say, forget the Kennedy assassination. Leave it to history. Never mind. Nothing to look at here, folks. Move along. But I suggest that the Kennedy assassination is the Rosetta Stone to understanding the world that you live in. And it's not a historical incident that has no impact. The world is what it is today in part because of the Kennedy assassination and the murders of his brother and Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and many, many others here and abroad who tried to work for social change and peace and a different world. And if you want to live in that different world, and you want to honor the life and legacy of John F. Kennedy, which the mayor said he was doing today, I suggest you have to solve his murder. How do you honor him? How do you love Kennedy and let his murderers get away? How can you do that and say that you loved John F. Kennedy? If some president today took up the policies of John F. Kennedy in 1963, he would be shot again in the streets of Dallas or some other city in this country by the same establishment that controls this country and ends democracy for all of us. We can know the truth, we can act on the truth, we can get out of the fear of each other and, and people and ghosts that they put up to us to be afraid of each other. We can embrace democracy and real freedom and the truth if we want to, and if we do, we will be free. We may have some other speakers here. I don't know if Robert Groden's here, but some. We have a conference that we're holding all weekend at the Aloft Hotel, 1033 Young. And it's starting today at 2 with a meet and greet. And we have the best researchers of the last five decades on these cases over there. It's the Aloft Hotel, and we'll be going all weekend. So I'm hoping some of you come by. We have day rates. Uh, and we have some brochures if anybody's interested. A-L-O-F-T, Aloft Hotel. 1033 Young at Griffin, not far from here. This is Robert Rosen here. Oh, he just called me and asked me. I don't know. I'm right behind you. Oh, well, here. This is Robert Groden. He was a photographic consultant of the House Select Committee on Assassinations, which also said that the Warren report was wrong. And uh, he's written a new book, Absolute Proof, about the photographic evidence. He's talking at our conference this weekend. And he sits out here in Dealey Plaza selling materials that have stuff about the truth of the assassination. And he's been, he's been ticketed 81 times. He was arrested for three days for doing nothing but First Amendment activity out here. He's suing the city of Dallas currently, our First Amendment rights. And uh, we've been working today to restore First Amendment here uh, to, to Dallas. Uh, but there wasn't any here, here inside. We asked the mayor 
if Robert F. Kennedy Jr. could come and speak at his event because Robert F. Kennedy Jr. came to Dallas and said that his father never believed the Warren Commission, thought it was a shoddy piece of work, and wanted to reinvestigate it and open the case. And he's, he thought about it, and then he said, well, I guess he could speak, but he'd have to stay on point. So not even Robert F. Kennedy would have had free speech today here in Dealey Plaza, but we think this plaza, which is a designated historical site, which is a public park, belongs, especially on the 50th anniversary, but every day, belongs to the American people, it belongs to history, and it belongs to the world. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Do you remember me? Yeah. yeah. So good, good to, to see you. Yeah, you been. Been. I want to thank you all yeah. for coming here. Thank you for caring what happened to your president. Apparently a great deal more than the city does. Right up here, uh, thank you so much again. Um, COPA has a conference. Uh, the information is available here. And um, oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, those of you who have come so many times through the years realize that COPA has kept the issues of the Kennedy assassination alive. For 49 years, we've been here, we've done this. The city has avoided it and ignored it. Now for the magic 50th, all of a sudden, they want it to be their event. Well, this is your event. You came and you're still here when they're finished. By tomorrow, this will all be forgotten, but we'll still be here. So I thank you again. I don't, I don't know how many of you know the names Sacco and Benzetti. These were two anarchists in Boston falsely accused of killing a guard in a, in a, in a bank robbery. They were eventually exonerated. At the end of their trial, Vanzetti stood up and he said, I want to thank the court. He said, because of you, I'm nothing but a, but a poor, poor fish peddler, and my friend Sacco here is a shoe peddler. He said, uh, no one knew who we were. He said, history will not long remember the name of the judge in this case, and he pointed to the judge nor the prosecuting attorney, and he pointed to the prosecuting attorney, but the name Sacco and the name Vanzetti will live on in the hearts of the people. And so this is the reality here, and it will live on. We are 85% of the American public do not believe the Warren Commission. The mayor told me they wanted to move the dissent to another park. I said, we're not the dissent. We're the mainstream. We're the majority. We're not any dissent. I said, if you want to send a dissent to a park, send the press over there. They're the dissent who keep lying to you and telling you it was Lee Harvey Oswald. Have you had your moment yet? Hmm? Yeah. yeah. We're good. Well, we didn't hold it at the moment of silence. I've just been talking. Let's do it again. All right. Robert suggested we should hold another moment of silence, even though we're off time but in a, in a different place. So I think we can take a moment to think about what happened here 50 years ago and what it means to us and what we might want to do about it. So I take a moment and think. Thanks. Folks, let's hope that the silence of the press ends. Let's hope that they become more honest than they have ever been before. Uh, and let's hope that they walk away from their control by the elements that are trying to cover all of this up. Once again, folks, thank you again for coming and thank you for caring. Thanks for keeping all this alive. Just conversations with people. Awesome stuff. If anybody wants information on the conference that's being held tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday, uh, there's um, material up here that can pick it up. All right. Thank you.